Right, we're going to fly right into Final Fantasy. This won't take but a second. Here we go in three, two, one, go. All right, looking good. And by the way, these names were uh, also a donation incentive. Yes, they were. Uh, that, that was an interesting little bit of a bid war there for a while. Yes. So what are our and names And I almost today? got to see them put in, too. <laughs> That's right. You know, Taskbot, he, he's pretty fast on these menus. He is. So what are our names today? Uh, it looks like we've got Shio, Wild, uh, sea cat that's CompuCat, right back here. CompuCat, are you able to come on here and take a little bow? <laughs> As you can see, if, uh, if we're not six feet apart, we have masks on. We have practicing COVID safety. Uh, so, <laughs> hence the rather unusual distance between the two of us today. <laughs> CompuCat here, he's been doing the soundboards and a lot of the stream tech here. I said we had to have him uh, as a name because he is just a wizard at this. And he said, no, 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 I'm really just a mage. Well, that's perfect because we've got four white mages here. <laughs> well, thank goodness he's not a black mage or that could be really problematic right now. <laughs> you know, as a stream guy sort of in the back here, he is wearing all black. So, you know, there's that. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> He's got a task spot shirt on. <laughs> So starting out here, we, we start out, we went into the first town, we bought some iron hammers, and we also visited the magic shop because, oh no, we've got to desync. Uh, yeah, that was probably his victory lap. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I mentioned we have a rubber floor. Well, that, that's, that's going to cause us a little bit of trouble if we're not careful. Uh, anytime static electricity happens, it sends a shock that could result in a signal being lost. And uh, CompuCat was uh, literally jumping up and down, running around, and then he touched the cart, which of course is electrically connected to everything else. So uh, it's amazingly sensitive. When we talk about marathon safe runs, this is the kind of thing we get scared by. So we're going to power off and just stick with us. Nothing needs to change on your end because as you see, this does not actually take us too much time to do. There is one minor additional step that I have to do to do a reset. And that is I have to re-clear the state of the cartridge. So we're going to take this, we're going to plug this into an INL retro board because with one of these, you too can back up your progress at any time. That's right. This isn't officially a sponsored stream, but I will throw them in as a sponsor anyway. <laughs> I am going to run a command. I just completely wiped the SRAM on here using this cartridge uh, uh, reader and writer. So that was the SRAM data. I'd like to thank Tech for giving me a bit of assistance with getting that done quickly. Now what we are going to do is swap back in, nuke the contents of the RAM in the console, which you saw us do earlier. It's just this console clear. There's nothing really fancy about it. It goes to this gray screen. We're going to quickly swap back and swap Taskbot back in so he's connected. And all right, console off, cartridge in, and three, two, one, and go. And we right. will not be moving around the environment anymore. <laughs> and this is actually not a bad thing that this happened. This is very useful for demonstrating why electrostatic discharge is such a problem. <laughs> and we get another chance to see how this starts out. We bought how many iron hammers? One, two, three, just three. But we have four white mages. That tells me somebody's not going to make it. Or at least one of them doesn't need a hammer. Yeah. And the spells we're getting, Harm and Ruse. Poor Dan. <laughs> Not even here, but still here in spirit. Uh, and so the fact that we were able to kind of like not run into any NPCs in town, that was good. That means we're still in sync. So someone was curiously asking, uh, how do you clear the save on, a, on the ROM? How do you clear the save when you start? On the ROM or the On the RAM? game, I guess you could say. On the game, okay. Uh, so, and I, I am going to take one very brief risk. I'm going to very cautiously switch over uh -oh. to chat. Sorry for asking. <laughs> okay. 
Very, very brief. Okay. okay. So now we can see uh, what's on screen. I, I took a small risk there, but <laughs> I, it, was, it was a measured risk. Um, <laughs> I intend to not touch my computer at all, but I have plastic keys, so I'm, uh, I was just very cautious with that. <laughs> so here's what I did. I have an INL retro board that uh, you can get from Infinite NES Lives. INL retro board allows you to write to or read from the save RAM on the cartridge. That is really important for this run. Um, so that gives us the uh, that gives us a lot of, of, of interesting abilities. If you wanted to hex in a different name than what you started with, you could do that in theory. If you wanted to, I don't know, save scum, you could do that too. In our case, we just want to wipe it out completely, so we wrote blank to it. All right, so we beat the first boss. Um, unfortunately, one of our guys didn't make it. Um, that's important because the experience is split between your surviving party members. You have to have someone die in that first fight in order to have everyone go level up, assuming that you haven't had like any other fights. Um, so how is this different from the last White Mages? This is the same run, pretty much. We got different names. Um, we just decided it's such a swag run, this would be a good uh, encore presentation. There's so much to explain, even with a run of this length, that uh, quite honestly, I don't think we're going to be short on material to talk through because oh, no. there's so many bizarre things that are, are in this run. Like four white mages. Yeah, you know. Yes. So well, three. I, I guess we don't count the fourth one anymore. Yeah. And a lot of people ask about the feasibility of doing a white mage run in real life. And I believe one person has tried to speed run it and it was 10 hours? Something like that, yeah. Um, so our last, uh, last time we showed this run, I think we had Jire on the couch, and he said, you know, yeah, I did, I did a white mage run in one sitting, and I had to ask, you know, how long was that sitting? It, yeah, I think the answer was 10 hours. Yeah, I think Jire has done, uh, like, single class challenges for all of them in this game, for all the classes, I think. Yeah, it's, you know, it's possible. It's just not, you know, very practical for a lot of classes. I mean, hammers are good, but they're not that good. <laughs> okay, maybe they're not that good either. <laughs> but yeah, the you know the white mages have the, the most limited weapon selection. It, it's pretty, it's it's pretty small. Yeah, they uh, they get access to like what the Thor hammer later on, which actually could probably deal some damage. You you could if you fought, but at that point you're kind of like, well, if you're not prohibiting it, you're probably just going to be using items every round. Yeah, thankfully this game does have items that, uh, with spells that are imbued onto them that, uh, especially AOE spells that, that are your friend, you could say. Yes, especially when you're a white mage. By the way, I'm being razzed for, uh, for not, for, we didn't check in with remote tech. Oh, like no. we should have, so they're upset at us, you see. Uh -huh. uh, I'm gonna take a quick pause to say, if you're watching this stream, thank you so much for being part of Task Giving. If you're watching, you're already part of this, we need you to do one more thing. We have some really big donation incentives that are coming up. I'm gonna ask the uh, host, if you're still around, tell us how big that donation incentive is. We've got a lot of ground to go. Uh, well, if that donation incentive was set at $3,000, and let's see, what are we at right now? Let me refresh this one more time. Uh, we're currently sitting at 202. Uh, we did get a couple of donations in for it, like this one from I am Dad Bod for $20, who says, you do not want to miss the finale of the 2020 Celeste collab. Bead like you've never seen before. <laughs> Intro cargo, brr. The Celeste folks have worked extremely hard on what they've done, and we set a pretty ambitious goal. But I think you guys can do it. We've already raised $6,000. We can do a third more in this last little bit. I know we can do it. We've got a couple of hours of content left before we get to that point, but don't wait to donate. Your money is going to National Alliance on Mental Illness. It's a fantastic organization. I can't say enough about their good, uh, the, the good things that they have done, and uh, please, Hop on there, donate what you can, even if it's only a dollar. We accept one dollar donations with no complaints, and we don't take a single penny of it. All of it goes directly to the charity. Oh yeah, I, I'm, I love supporting Nami myself. Uh, you know, with RPG Limit Break and and other things that go on. And uh, I'm glad I could be here to uh, make fun of the second white mage <laughs> who is no longer with us. That's right. Our four white mages are now down to two, but CompuCat is still with us. 
Yes, we do plan to do this every year. Uh, my goal for this year is to raise $10,000 for National Alliance on Mental Illness. And that's one of the reasons the goal is where it is. Ooh, we have the image. Nice. <laughs> we are taking grave risks. All right, we can now see our own stream. Yay. That is a very good thing. Thank you. I would stop there before we have anything yeah. go wrong. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we have CompuCat who has been the everything in this run uh, or this, this event. Frankly, he has had more hats than, uh, than white hats. I don't know. <laughs> He's done so much. So thank you so much for CompuCat for helping us get set up. I'm going to stop talking about that because you just ended up in a very interesting part of this run. What's going on here? So um, we, we've got our two white mages going in to Marsh Cave. We're on level three with two white mages. And um, we've got a couple spells and a couple iron hammers. And that's it. And this dungeon is, uh, can be a little finicky in that setup. Uh, there are all sorts of enemies that can surprise you. Uh, large groups can just jump on you. Uh, and then we're going to have to beat some, uh, a forced fight in order to get the next key item here anyway. Um, so this is going to be, this gonna be an interesting fight. I'm pretty sure Marsh Cave here is like the worst dungeon, people's opinion, in the entire game. Maybe Earth Cave is not a whole lot better. The undead in this in these caves just like stun lock you. They just they get you and they uh, you get into a fight and you can never get out of it. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. If you've played the original Final Fantasy, you know one of the uh, the, the sort of like most annoying things is you get these large groups of undead enemies. Um, they have stun attacks. Uh, you get attacked and your your guys are paralyzed. You can't run. You can't do anything except get there and get paralyzed again. <laughs> And somehow pull a whole house out of the little treasure box. But if you can make it to the wizards, you can <laughs> fight them in a boss fight that you can't run from and sacrifice one of your party members so that the other one can use the ruse spell. The ruse spell increases your evasion significantly so that you can uh, avoid the wizards hits later and possibly even uh, use the ruse spell again to have even higher evasion. Then you can fight back. I can't help but notice that CompuCat is dead. Yes, sorry CompuCat. And thus our white mages are down to one. So this white mage that's surviving, uh, so this was the highest bidder, um, and this white mage is gonna have to uh, just pull it out for everyone else because uh, we're not gonna go, we're, uh, we're not gonna be reviving anyone else. Uh, this white mage has all the magic. They were the one that got the ruse spell and the harm spell in the beginning. And as you can see, they've got the hammer to uh, hammer down these wizards and they're able to keep getting uh, some experience. So uh, let's see how they do. I mean, yeah, one thing uh, people might notice is there's only one white mage alive, but it, and it got a lot of experience, but it only gained one level. This game only lets you gain one level um, per fight. So in order to gain any of the extra levels that our poor white mage might have, well, it's going to have to uh, get into some more encounters. All right, press F to pay respects to CompuCat as a white mage. Uh, so that, um, that experience cap for one level, um, you know, it is, that is true, but uh, we're actually not capped at this point. Uh, we actually just don't have enough experience to get the next level. Um, the enemies don't give you that much experience. Uh, however, the next boss will cap us. Uh, we'll have enough experience to actually get to, to the next level. And at that point, if you were to go to your status menu and look at like your experience to next level, it would say something like minus 1,003,958. It's, uh, you know, cause it's overflowed. Um, but th the game actually uh, evens out completely uh, intelligently if you just fight another battle and uh, it, it'll, uh, you'll get a level up, even if you only get like one experience and uh, everything will be all good after that. Of course, we're gonna run from this one, aren't we? Yes. We're gonna be running from pretty much every battle that we can. 
um, just because we need to, uh, that, that's the fastest way to go. And we gotta go fast here with TaskBot. These, gr these ogres and green ogres, great for experience. Exactly enemies you wanna fight if you need, you know, gold and experience. So there's a lot of people that have commented on previous versions of Final Fantasy Tasses believing that this is impossible. Can you talk through how a real-time speedrunner, a human playing this game on a real console, how they manipulate luck and how it differs for a TAS? Oh yeah, okay. So a lot of people might have seen uh, Fred Coughlin's recent um, run that was, um, so he's best known as someone who made the uh, Zelda randomizer, but he also has done some manipulated runs after he saw the, the Final Fantasy run that we did at RPG Limit Break. And he actually set up a setup where he'd hold down the B button. So if you, if you press the B button, your, your character kind of like comes up and you get the chance to order him and then he walks back. And that will increment the, um, the RNG a certain number of times. And so if you plan it out right, you can hold down the B button and count how many times your guy comes up and back and then you hit the A button. If you hold down the A button, they'll fight the first enemy. Uh -huh. so this is sort of like a buffering strat that you can manipulate uh, fairly, with, with fairly, significant, fairly consistently. And so he was able to actually do a, um, I think he got down to just over two hours. Not bad. Yeah. So that broke the new RT, the RTA record? Yes. So that is a RTA with luck manipulation. Nice. Yeah. So the, and this was just this year. That's incredible. And I love that this game is from the 1980s made primarily by Nasir, I think is the correct pronunciation. It still holds up the test of time that people are playing it today and people are still finding new strategies today. A lot of that is based on collaboration between tool-assisted speedrun content and human speedrunners. And I love seeing that collaboration happen. Oh yeah. One of the most interesting things about the uh, original uh, SDA versus uh, tool-assisted, uh, shall we say, battle might be one way to phrase it was that there was a misunderstanding that tool assisted speedruns feed routing and strategy information into real time speedruns uh, as far as glitches that are found and other things and the speedruns that are done by humans feed back in routing and different possible uh, tests that are worth exploring further with tool assisted speedrun techniques and the two symbiotic communities have come together to really make this particular game pretty darn impressive in my opinion oh yeah yeah, in fact, there's a lot of communication. I've, you know, not just this game, but pretty much every game that I've uh, done a task for, you know, I, it's been really helpful to kind of get in contact with real-time runners and, um, you know, talk with them about how they've routed things, um, look at their routing and uh, how they're planning things and, uh, you know, get some ideas that way. In fact, if you were watching um, our first day, I had a few tasses where I had the world record speedrunner on, uh, on the couch here, and we were talking about you know, how I did something, they got some ideas, I saw their th ideas, and yeah. I, I think we're all right to, to get some donations. We've got some fetch quests going on. There's plenty of time to, to get some good donations. That sounds good to me. Uh, I've got a few here, specifically, uh, $5 from Luna Maynor, who says, I don't have much, but here's $5. I've been so surprised at how great this marathon has been. Thanks to all the runners for donating their time to a good cause and for keeping me entertained during downtime at work. Awesome. And that's a good point, is uh, uh, as, we, as we've been mentioning, if you don't have much, anything helps. Uh, as little as a dollar, we are uh, more than happy to take that and give it all to NAMI. Uh, Media Magnet also donated $4 and says, if everyone watching donates $4, we can get the incentive met. Let's get this donation train going. I like the sound of that. It doesn't take much, folks. That's right. I'm also doing a donation of all bits and subs, so if you only have a Prime sub hanging around and you haven't used it yet this month, Drop that in here, it won't cost you anything, and I will donate those funds directly to NAMI. That is a fast boat. <laughs> <laughs> the boat goes twice as fast as the person uh, walking, and the airship that we'll get later goes twice as fast as the boat. And we're gonna use that um, where we can, because we need to manipulate our kind of step routing 
uh, that the, the um, so the way we walk in the outer world influences the enemies we see. So there's different enemy groups, and within each enemy group, different enemies can show up. Um, certain enemy groups have um, uh, have this flag that lets you not be able to run from them. We don't want that because we need to be able to run from as many fights as we can. Um, you know, the other problem is that sometimes we may see, uh, the, because of how the encounter system works, the encounter rate is higher in, um, in the outer world than it is in dungeons, and it's even lower on the ship. So if you imagine kind of like this, uh, this uh, array of like 256 numbers, we're cycling up and sometimes down, but sometimes we go keep going up and start from the beginning. There's like this uh, sequence of eight different orders. It goes like up, down, up, down, up, up, down, down, something like that. Um, but anyway, you, it goes through these sequence of numbers and that tells you sort of like the, it gives you like this number from zero to 250 or so. Um, and if that number is above this threshold for your area, you get a random battle. So if that number is above the threshold for, uh, so it's above the threshold for say the outer world, but not above the threshold for the dungeons, if we manipulate our steps so that we're in a dungeon for that step, then we can avoid a random battle. That's sort of the, the logic behind how we're routing these steps to like avoid random battles. And you can even do more with that because there's actually a lot of tiles that don't have, that don't increase that threat gauge. Like going through a door, like the bottom inside a building, the bottom level of a building, like the boat dock, the areas outside a corner. There's like there's a handful of like encounter free tiles that you can also step on to not increase that threat to to help manage that also. Yes, but I should point out that sometimes we actually don't we actually um, avoid those extra steps because that can help us to line up um, those spaces where we would have a fight in one area but not in another, it helps us to put that in the right area um, it, yeah. to, uh, to sort of like get extra steps. So sometimes we actually want more steps and sometimes we want fewer. Um, there's also situations where we want to get this, we want to get more fights to kind of get the, uh, get that encounter uh, number further on so that we avoid uh, the groups. So part of the encounter system, there's a list. So, okay, every area has eight different uh, slots for enemy groups. And each slot may have, so two slots in the same area could have the same enemy group. Um, but the that can't run flag is tied to the enemy group. Um, and so we wanna get, there's also the, let's see, the way that it, Ouch. <laughs> Ow. Um, so we don't know what that noise was. That hurt a lot. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> it was Taskbot arguing against your, your argument there, Axeman, okay? I see. Uh, um, anyway, so... We have these slots of, um, you know, uh, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, that index uh, that's in each, uh, in each area. And we have in memory, there's a table that goes through all of these uh, numbers. And um, uh, through, as we get in each encounter, so it's like three, four, three, four, five, six, seven, um, and then that, the, the rarity of each number in that table kind of con controls which enemy groups are sort of more rare than others. So some enemy groups are super rare and the, I think it's like the seven and eight numbers in that table are super rare. And so they, uh, they're, they're not kind of in that table so many times. And other ones are like more common. I have to agree with the chat on this one. Extreme owl noise. Taskbot used Taser. It was super effective. <laughs> that was Taskbot zapping away the group eight. Apparently. Just so you don't have to run into it. You know, sometimes the group eight is, uh, 
sometimes it's a super hard enemy. I think uh, Warmech, actually Warmech might be group seven. He's not like as rare as some of the other ones. Um, but, uh, and then group eight is like the rarest one. You only see them in like, it's like one or two out of 256 fights. Um, Good old Tyro and Iron Gall. That's right, yeah. Some of these super rare fights, the Soria, that only appears in the outer world certain areas. So I was curious, since we have Taskbot joining in on commentary, how does how does Taskbot feel about the bats in this dungeon? <laughs> I don't think he really cares about them. He just sort of ignores their presence unless he absolutely has to deal with them, in which case he dispatches them very fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Taskbot, you know, Taskbot doesn't have to worry about them. I'm the one who had to worry about them making this. Um, you know, making this run and getting the, uh, the task here is, is just... Uh, <laughs> It, it, it's kind of painful because it's like I, I play through the different fights. I get to this part where the um, the bat's there, and he's in my way. So I've got to go back and like change something. And the RNG for the NPC movements in these bats is so much more insane than anything else because the bats um, the, the the movement can uh, can change anytime. Uh, Let's see, so there's like an accumulation system. Every time any NPC moves, it affects the movement on all the other NPCs. And any time you, um, the, the movement can be based on also a counter that starts when you enter an area. And that counter, uh, so you, you'll see me sort of like, well, if you look real closely, maybe you can see me stop for like one frame before I go down the stairs or something, if you look real close. Um, and that's to, you know, get some bats out of my way, or maybe later on uh, there's some places where we actually need to talk to an NPC that's also moving, and we can kind of make him go a little closer to us. So we can manipulate the NPC movement, but it's, it's pretty tricky. You've got to um, uh, either do different, you've got to do a few different things. You can either uh, pause before you go into the next area, and that kind of like has this butterfly effect where you, you change their movement. Um, Another one is to touch them for one frame, and that can make them move faster. So there's um, actually a system where if you, uh, uh, they, they wanted to make it so that you could push the NPCs out of your way if you're in, if you're in their way. Um, and so they set up this system where if you touch the, if you touch the NPC, then it's uh, kind of like time to next move actually gets cut. And so you can like touch an NPC for one frame, cut its movement time, and then that'll have a butterfly effect that changes all the NPC movements. So there's all these different ways you can kind of like change the movement. And they all cost like a few, like, you know, one frame at a time. And there's, you know, I, I'm trying to get all these frames out. So I'm trying different things to kind of like do this in as few frames lost as possible. Yeah, so, uh... One thing this dungeon uh, shows off is brilliant game design of early games where they make you dive halfway through a dungeon or mostly through a dungeon to pick up an item and then force you to walk out to get the item to complete the dungeon um, without giving you any means of getting out of the dungeon faster. Yeah, I think they're trying to get you to grind and get your levels up faster, but it's, yeah, it's really annoying. And there's absolutely no way to get like a warp spell at this point. Because those, those are all um, promotion locked, aren't they? That's right, warp yeah. All of the warp spells are promotion locked. There's like one warp spell that's level five that you can get in Melmond in the town, the town right here, um, but it is promotion locked. Yeah, this game has a, a, a thing where you can go pick up an item and then upgrade your character's classes. And uh, warp is level five black wizard locked, which is the upgraded... Uh, black mage and we also don't have any black mages here anyway so that doesn't yep. help yep and we are not gonna bother doing the class change either we'll just stick with the the white mage good time for some more donations definitely time sure uh well i've got twelve dollars and 34 cents here from your best friendo who says not a Celeste fan, but we're all here to help each other. Donate! I agree. Nice uh, donation. 20... Yeah, exactly. Uh, $25 from Curlon, who says, Magnet made me do it. 
four dollars from SSPX, who is uh, heeding the call and saying, donating because Media Magnet said, if I and everyone else donated, we can reach the incentive. Also, I am healing CompuCat with 900% more health than before. <laughs> Invisible White Mage is back in the run. <laughs> he yelled yay. <laughs> Thanks, Media. And thank you, SSPX. Also, really appreciate that you're best friend, though. <laughs> I think CompuCat uh, angered Taspot uh, with the uh, moving around, and that's why uh, no longer with us is uh, in this uh, adventure. Hmm. I see. Yes, yeah, the beginning of this game is just a bunch enough. of fetch questing. That's all it is. <laughs> Back yep. and forth fetch questing. There is quite a bit of fetch quests. Uh, the fetch quests are sort of uh, concentrated near the beginning. And then once we get uh, past here, I think it's pretty much straight on. A little more. I've got one more. Go for it. Uh, another five dollars. This one's from o Omega Wild, who says our Taskbot Overlord demanded donations. So here is mine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So with all these battles to run from, I guess I should point out that this is a no resets run because Taskbot has trouble sort of resetting at um, and restarting. Uh, very. Uh, we used to. We solved that, but we just didn't. Yeah. do that run because we had a donation incentive for this one instead oh, okay. <laughs> um, so this run uh, no resets actually changed things quite a bit because if you watch sort of like the fastest uh, uh, no I guess no memory corruption run um, you'll see that it uses both soft and hard resets if you do a hard reset then you'll uh, you actually uh, erase all of the, uh, the RAM. It restarts the counter that controls which enemy groups you're on. And so you can kind of change your enemy group layout. Um, in order to save your game though, you've either got to go to an inn or use like a tent. And that item management takes a little time, but it's worth it. Because you can get, uh, you can kind of like manipulate your enemy group by just using it at a certain point. To do that on Taskbot today, we have a reset wire we can connect directly to him that comes out of the back of the console. We have not modified how the console works. We just tapped the reset line itself so we can pull that low. That allows us to do a soft reset, but not a hard reset. And that is the one thing that's kind of made this a little bit tricky. If we did the hard reset, we'd have to break the run into segments and physically power off the, uh, the console or come up with a way like others have done that literally controls a power bar. <laughs> Uh, but you'd also yeah. have to probably reset memory between each one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's also yeah, soft... And... <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, the, uh, there's also soft resets, which you can use, um, like, if you... So the soft reset will take you kind of out. Uh, you'll reload your game, but it won't reset that, that counter. But you'll also... But you'll get to restart. So that's useful. You save your game at, like, an in. Then you hit the soft reset, and now you're out in the outer world. So yeah, I was just going to, quick little story here is a lot of us uh, who have been around Twitch for a while remember the days of Feasel doing uh, no uh, reset runs of this game like five years ago. With his golden and, NES. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, the golden NES. And every day just watching like how horrible the uh, the run was like without being able to reset and having to deal with the encounters that you got stuck with. And uh it was, uh, it was something to watch, especially when you compare it to uh, what you can do when you actually are able to reset the, the, the console. <laughs> Those poor man cats in Temple of Ordeals. <laughs> so many, so many victims. Yeah. Yeah, for no manipulation runs on this game, I think the world record is uh, like three, three hours now. It's definitely. Yeah, it's probably three to three and a half range right now. It's definitely fast. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, this is going to be one hour and 17 minutes, so it, it, it's quite a bit slower. A little different strategy, though. You, you can you can do things with perfection that you wouldn't otherwise. Yeah. Uh, brief time to talk about the piano roll analogy. Oh, oh, oh go for it. I'm going to talk about the piano roll analogy. It's kind of like that summoning salt video you've heard. Okay, you're standing at a bus stop, and... 
Okay. It's not quite like the 21 frame rule in Super Mario Brothers. It's a little bit different, but uh, it's still the same type of example that I overuse all the time because it works. It's effective. You can make fun of me for it, but bear with me. So think back to the 1920s. Have a player piano that has a piano scroll. It's nothing but a scroll, a long roll of paper with pun pun uh, punctuations. Uh, punctuations? I have not had enough sleep. Per perforation? Yes. Perforations is the word I was looking for, not punctuations. Well, that punctuated my story with a lot, lot of uh, extra. <laughs> anyway, so perforations, holes on the paper. And you send that through a player piano, and those holes line up with the notes on the piano. So as you send that roll, uh, that scroll of paper through, it plays a predefined sequence of notes that have been punched into the paper. A piano roll on a player piano can play back a predefined sequence of notes to play back an entire song from beginning to end. Whereas what Taskbot is doing is playing back, instead of a predefined sequence of notes, he's playing back a predefined sequence of button presses. And it's probably washed out a little bit, and I'm not gonna touch it, but if you look real careful, you'll see that we actually have what he's pressing on this visualization board right here. He's doing nothing more and nothing less than 60 times a second, advancing to the next set of buttons that need to be pressed, and doing it again. It's very, very uh, impressive that we can get this reliability until somebody does a victory sprint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's some activity going on. I'll let you explain what just happened. Well, we just lit the first orb. Um, we beat Lich, so we got very lucky. The last two bosses that we fought, there was sort of like a sub-boss vampire, and then there was Lich, the first uh, of four fiends. They're both undead enemies, and we're a white mage. So we have um, a series of spells called Harm that affect undead enemies. And so we were actually able to um, uh, beat these bosses fairly quickly. Uh, a lot easier than the next boss is gonna be. Which we'll see. Well, actually, the next boss, not too bad. I guess uh, uh, the next few bosses are, are going to be a lot tougher because they're not undead. And we can't just use our, um, our harm spell to just uh, affect them. I've been informed that Darbian was the first person to come up with the 21 frame roll bus stop analogy. Uh, so I stand corrected. Still, Summoning Salt's got some pretty awesome video explanations too. So. <laughs> Um, so in Final Fantasy, the objectives in the game here, you've got to, they tell you in the beginning, you know, we, you need to light the orbs. Warriors go uh, light the orbs and then you'll be able to um, save the world by uh, something like that. The, the elements are out of sync and so we have to light the orbs, beat the fiends, and so the, the first fiend was Earth. The second fiend that they tell you, now that, you've now that you've defeated the fiend of Earth, you should go for the fire fiend. You said the word orb, and now Chad is saying orb. Uh, orb, crystal, I, I, you know, in the <laughs> Japanese version, they say crystal. <laughs> and and um, they actually, yeah, they say orb, so. Um, so they're gonna, they say, you should do the fire fiend next, but we're gonna ignore that and just go on with the rest of the game and, and do the fire fiend later, because the Fire Fiend doesn't block anything. Um, on the other hand, beating the Earth Fiend unlocks a uh, very important item pickup over here in the Circle of Sages. These uh, sages all give you like all sorts of neat advice, but only one of them actually gives you something useful. So that's the only one we're gonna bother talking to. So as you can see, it says go to the volcano and beat that Fire Fiend. Um, the thing is, we can also use that canoe to visit another place that will actually give us an airship that we can fly around the world a lot faster. And so that's really the, what the, that's the speed route. Worth it. Yes. Uh, One other note, I am, uh, I am using a player piano explanation instead of music box. Uh, youngsters these days haven't seen either one, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I remember whenever it's a player piano in my, uh, no, or uh, <laughs> what? Well, I don't know. I, I was exposed to player pianos. There was one at a, this cool little, uh, uh, we had a JB's Diner. It was a root beer drive-in. It was JB's Drive-In in, in Colorado, and they had a player piano there, and it worked. You could put, put a quarter in, and you could, actually, I think it was even five cents, oh. and it would play music, so I don't know. Same thing as a record player? No. 
No, definitely. Def <laughs> Although, a record player has records that are round, like... Sorry, I, I shouldn't set them off. Huh? Uh. Like a white mage? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> you surely don't mean that oh i almost said the o word oh oh yeah you almost said the o word that's okay chat said the o word for you you know this is not quite the conversation i think i should be having on stream <laughs> well, we actually have a little while before our next um <laughs> orb <laughs> and um so we, we've got so instead of doing a actual um, elemental fiend dungeon, we're going to be going to the ice cave here. The ice cave is one of the more brutal dungeons. There are many fights here that you can't run from and also have large groups of enemies that are fairly strong. Um, one of them is the wizards that we fought in Marsh Cave there. And you saw how we had a pretty rough fight there. In fact, we had to sacrifice CompuCat who's, you know, now that we've only down to one guy, we, we kind of don't have a way to beat these guys. So we have to make sure that we don't run into these uh, unrunnable fights. So we're gonna be doing some, um, some mild shenanigans to kind of like tweak our steps, um, get into battles that we can run from, like sorcerers, no problem. Although I'd be more scared of sorcerers than wizards and in, in <laughs> but. The sorcerers are the one enemy in the game that have a very special ability called Death Touch. And they attack you like six times, so <laughs> have fun with the sorcerers if you, you yes. can't run from them. Yeah, um, and, and that's, the, that's one of the big differences between routing a TAS and an unmanipulated. Um, so if you have no luck manipulation, you pretty much need to avoid uh, getting into a fight with sorcerers because you're probably not going to run from from them right away. And um, they, they, there's usually more than one of them. Um, I should point out that the, as we're manipulating, <laughs> as we're manipulating our, uh, t our battles here, we're actually, um, change, we're actually kind of controlling our luck. W when you run from battle, you've got this RNG that kind of keeps, um, this RNG keeps going, uh, the, the same RNG that controls your hits and misses also controls the turn order in battle and also controls your chances of running because you, you're at, there's actually in, you know, as there should be a chance, uh, only a chance to run. However, obviously we're gonna make sure that we, that chance just happens to work out every time. Uh, normally, you would be getting these messages that say, like, can't run, can't run, can't run. But no, our uh, taskbot is always able to run when he wants to. And you simply do that by waiting the right amount of time. That's right. So this RNG, it kind of, like, keeps cycling as you're waiting for your turn to come up in battle or uh, so when we've got our cursor on fight or on the enemy. Um, <laughs> the, uh, that RNG just keeps cycling and we can kind of like wait till it gets to the right spot there and then actually tell our guy to fight. Once we told him to fight, then we can't change anything else. Uh, we just have to kind of let him attack, let the enemy attack. <laughs> There's an important food delivery message in chat for us. I see. <laughs> also, they had some really interesting words that start with O, like octothrope. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the first dungeon in the run also that introduces the trap tile monsters. Like the eye and uh, the uh, undead tile here that that are forced encounters when you step on them. Uh, well, the wizards in Marsh Cave were yeah. also like that. I like to think of that as a boss though, not really like a yeah. trap tile, but I, I understand mean, it is a trap tile. Okay. Yeah, you've got that undead fight. Uh, there's also like this one that's sort of random. There's one with like really hard enemies and then you beat the, the mages and then you beat them and then the um, the treasure in it is like a cloth. <laughs> it's like cloth armor. Actually, the room right now with the six chests, the, the last spot in front in between the two chests is actually a trap tile also. That's right. And it's frost. There's a lot of weird trap tiles in this game. Yeah. 
I would like to encourage chat to ask questions, not penalize people who ask questions, because asking questions is how you learn. So chat, ask us questions, and we will do the best we can to answer them. You've got the creator of the task right here, so, you know. <laughs> so we're going through the same section again, aren't we? Uh, yes. So in order to get through this dungeon, you've got to, um, so you've got to go through, uh, you've got to get to this, so you saw that central room with all the holes. You've got to fall in the holes, go down to that bottom floor, then you've got to come back up, fall down a different hole that takes you to that middle area. Then you can get the chest where you fight the eye and you get the floater. The floater is what you need. So there's a bunch of questions in chat. I will answer the rapid fire. Pizza, Hawaiian. Tass, baby Tasses come from uh, Tasspot when he's much older because he's not very old just yet and we don't want to force that on him. Although he does theoretically have a sister and possibly a brother, but let's not let, let's not speak of Tadbo. Where where anyway. do new task bots come from? Uh, that's you know when a when a when task a task gets a little too manipulated, things get weird. Just don't don't ask those questions. You don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. Okay. Um, how do you make good questions get to the point quickly? Uh, well, you donate five dollars, or you subscribe, or throw some bits in there. Doesn't take much, you know how to do this game. Your money goes directly to National Alliance on Mental Illness and gets your question up at the top of the tier. Uh, where do orbs come from? They come from audience members who just can't take a clue by four. I mean, oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hard. Baby, baby tasses come from Yoshi Island. I like that answer. <laughs> I love you, chat. Don't mind me. <laughs> so our boat here, we're taking a little pleasure cruise, um, going around before we actually stop here and go where we need to go, which is this desert where the, the airship is buried. We use the floater stone and uh, raise the airship out of the desert. Um, but we actually took that extra trip on the boat to manipulate our step counter. That's going to... Um, this is sort of the, um, the playing a few moves ahead move where we're uh, just looking ahead, making sure everything lines up. Uh, Kerlon, let's go with Fortran. Fortran. Can I manipulate your RNG so I can win the lottery and become a millionaire? We have talked about the consequences of tassing real life. And the number one consequence of tasking real life can be explained in this very simple analogy. So remember what a tool-assisted speedrun is. It's nothing more and nothing less than having the ability to have save states that you can re-record or you return back to and call that a re-record, loading a previous save state, and a movie file that's recording your progress. You don't need anything else. You can make a tool-assisted speedrun with those two things in place. However, mentally think about what would happen in real life if you were to make a save state and then go to the bathroom and then load that save state. Do you, do you really want to task life? <laughs> Think about that for a second. Why is it called Final Fantasy if there's more than eight of them? Okay, I can actually answer that one. It's because when they made this first Final Fantasy game, the makers of, this se of the game thought this was gonna be their last game they ever made. They thought, uh, you know, they actually, the creator actually said, you know, I'm thinking of retiring from making video games. Everyone's telling me this, was a, this is a terrible industry to be in. And he made this game and it just, you know, sold wildly well. And he, then he was kind of like, oh, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess not. Oh by, the, oh, by the way, we need a $49, uh, I'm sorry, a $41 donation right now. So if someone can organize a $41 donation. Well, I mean, when your company before Final Fantasy creates classics like Rad Racer and 3D World Trip Runner, <laughs> you know, that, that, that's understandable why this was their Final Fantasy. Although Rad Racer is a great game, but 3D World is is something else. <laughs> uh, is it a good time for donations? It's a great time. This is going to be yeah. a real long dungeon. I was uh, just about to ask about that. Yeah, we've got a couple here. Uh, I have 
$10 from uh, Winnis, who says, Taskbot says, donate, must donate. Thanks, Winnis. <laughs> and uh, $25 from Easy Games underscore, who says, happy to see an event with a heavy focus on tasses and to support a great cause at the same time. I hope we can see more of these events in the future. And I agree with that. Awesome. Hey, we can double our audience size if each of you tells five friends to come watch and one of them does it. So go help get more viewers. This is going to be a very fun Final Fantasy run. Bring them in. It's going to be fun. But yeah, someone should donate $41 right now. <laughs> Just for the lols. <laughs> Did I hear right, Dwango, that you said you're having a Hawaiian pizza? Yes, because pineapple doesn't necessarily belong on pizza, but it can be on pizza. And accepting that certain people have different tastes is important in life. I mean, fruit is healthy, right? Yeah. We have pineapple on our pizza. It's a health food. Yes, exactly. That's right. Yeah. I thought the tomato sauce is the health part. You know, it's tomato. Uh, I think tomato is technically a fruit too. Vegetable. Yeah, tomato is also a fruit. So okay, you're getting you got to get your double fruits in. It's like making a smoothie, but it's a pizza. Ah, two now, servings in, in in one meal. <laughs> now here's my question to to uh, Twitch chat. Why don't you go ahead and donate and tell me? Do you agree with Dwango or or not? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Let's see what people say. I have derailed commentary on this so bad. <laughs> chat, I have. Thoroughly enjoyed interacting with you guys. I am running on like nine hours of sleep for the last three days. So, total. <laughs> yeah. Dwango has done an amazing job setting all this up. Um, he has like barely slept at all. I actually, you know, I went home and slept after, you know, doing some of my runs earlier. So, you know, I'm here, I've been here each day, but Dwango has like lived here. I slept on the floor. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, big big applause. Let's get some applause for Dwango. Well, and for CompU too. Uh, the, the reality is that COVID, we're, we're obviously six feet apart to make this happen. Um, COVID meant that we could not have a normal sized staff for this. There's three of us in this room right now. So that's it. We got to figure out how to do 24 seven with three people. Um, occasionally we've had a little bit of help from uh, from Guy who also hopped in. He was absolutely fantastic help overnight and Grave Dolly has stopped in with food. But that's the entirety of this crew. You don't normally try to take on a 24/7 three-day event with this many with this few people. So, I gotta say, uh, it was very very worth it to see so far that we've already raised over six thousand um, dollars, and there's there's so much more we can do. Uh, so. We're in the Sea Shrine now. The Sea Shrine, a huge, huge dungeon. Um, you saw we had to go, uh, you actually come into the Sea Shrine on the middle floor. You go to the top floor to pick up some treasure and uh, the main treasure was the slab. We skipped all the other stuff because we just don't need it. There's like, there's the best armor in the game. No armor, we're, we're in a task. We don't, we don't have time to use armor. Defender Sam would like to know how much lint is on my shirt. I would say um, a bit, a bit. I've been picking it off. Huh. But uh, not a good idea to do that too much because I'm going to generate static, elect static electricity if I overdo it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I uh, got a second, Dwango. Yeah, what's up? Uh, we received a forty-one dollar donation. What did that bring our donation total to? Uh, Six thousand nine hundred and forty-two dollars. Perfect. Ooh. That's exactly what I was hoping for. That came from a Carvius, who says, human.exe has requested funds in a specific amount. <laughs> Thank you so much. How many cents is that? Just checking. Just, just checking. Zero cents? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um... <laughs> you mean orb cents. <laughs> uh, I often play a bard when I play... Uh, uh, <laughs> play role-playing games, and I usually cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, this dungeon, for those who are curious, is the uh, Sea Shrine. It's where the Water Fiend is hiding, since the, the Fire Fiend is kind of in a different direction. They, they don't want to go, so we're going to leave poor, poor Carrie alone for a while and, and go make friends elsewhere. Uh, I've been informed by chat we now need a $2 donation. Oh. 
I've been told I'm in trouble. <laughs> Orbification Isaac? <laughs> Defend the Sam, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and this is going to be the longest fight because Kraken here has 800 HP and we are a white mage with limited offensive capabilities. Luckily, Kraken has a 25% chance to squirt ink at us and that ink, um, it, it gives us the dark status. But due to the programming of this game, the dark status doesn't actually do anything. So we're gonna get uh, darkened and then just keep wailing away with these critical hits. Um, and it's gonna take a little while. Like I said, 800 HP and uh, 32 damage per hit, which means... Hmm, 32 damage per hit, huh? Who can math this out? So that's gonna take exactly... Okay, I get it. Yeah. So we've got 25 rounds. I, I don't know if anyone's counting. Um, suddenly something happened. Uh, our host, um, what, what just happened? Uh, well, we, we got a pretty sizable donation here. Hang on one second, it's still getting processed. Oh, okay. I saw a $2 <laughs> donation come in, and then things got a little bit wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had uh, uh, $250 come in from the J-Pod, who says, mental illness help is all we need today. Keep up the great work, y'all. Thank you so much for that generous donation. Oh, thank uh, you, man. I really appreciate it. While, while I'm here, yes, we did get $2 as well from Pineapple, who says, <laughs> pineapple belongs on pizza. I see. Uh, I'm sorry, taters. <laughs> One thing I can say, the uh, task giving is content from tool assisted speedruns, and uh, the, a lot of content came from task videos, including this run you can find on taskvideos.org. There's also this community that's, uh, that's part of what we do, the, the, <laughs> part of what we do with TaskBot. The TaskBot the community is largely at discord.task.bot. A lot of these names are folks that are part of that Discord server. If you'd like to be part of our community, head on over, discord.task.bot. Wonderful people like Taters, <laughs> just to name a few. <laughs> There's so many people from our, from our community in chat right now, but I'm gonna pick on him just because he's getting harassed for pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> At over 9,000 cents. <laughs> uh, so how many hits total? I lost count. 25. 25? I haven't been counting. I don't know if anyone has. Well, it's a perfect time for uh, any other commentary from host. <laughs> Maybe a blurb about Nami. Oh. Uh, sure thing. I can pull one of those up here. How about this one? That Nami is driven by their core values of hope, inclusion, empowerment, compassion, and fairness. They believe in the possibility of recovery, wellness, and the potential in all of us. They embrace diverse backgrounds, cultures, and perspectives. Nami promotes confidence, self-efficacy, and service to their mission. They practice respect, kindness, and empathy, and they fight for equality and justice. Just good to know that uh, we, we've got such an incredible company that we are raising money for. Uh, their, their cause is uh, certainly an, an excellent one that I am uh, happy to be here helping you all uh, support. So uh, please keep your donations coming in. I am seeing a lot coming, and uh, we're working on getting those processed as quickly as possible so that I can read out those comments. Thank you. Also, uh, Linger Stink would like to know what other glitches are possible when you're not doing four mage tasks, if there's any notable glitches. If you're not doing a four mage task, um, there's, let's see... There's, you know, all sorts of uh, different spells. Uh, unfortunately, most of the glitches actually are not helpful. Like, uh, a lot of the spells, the, the effect that kind of like you expect to have doesn't actually happen. That's kind of annoying, but <laughs> there's, uh, there's also some spells that are, uh, the enemies are supposed to resist, but we're able to affect them even though they're supposed to resist it. And we'll see that in a little bit. Um, we're we're going to take advantage of that, actually. That's a, that's a pretty good one. Um, one of the ones we're going to do is there is a robot that's going to give us an item 
at the end of this uh, area, and you're supposed to have to fight some enemies on a trap tile, or at least run into them. You, you can run from the encounter, but it's a trap tile that you'll have to step on, and then there's a treasure room. Um, but if you can get the robot to step on the tile right in front of the door, then you can avoid going into that fight. So through the magic of our uh, luck manipulation, we actually are gonna make that robot go at the right place at the right time so that we can talk to him and uh, he'll give us the cube. One thing I'm kind of sad about is on the bottom of the screen, there's no out of bounds bat. Uh, Couldn't yes. even put that in the task. Oh. <laughs> So uh, the, the BAP can actually, um, I, I think the initial placement or something about the movement, uh, I, don't, I forget how the out-of-bound BAP gets there, they, but they can actually, the BAP could be out of bounds sort of in the, the interstitial area that you can't go to. But somehow the BAP gets there. So yeah, we uh, you took 25 rounds to beat up this Kraken. You know, obviously, they're supposed to be a fiend of air that's supposed to have more health and be harder. I mean, obviously, it's going to take more than 25 rounds, right? That's right, yeah. I mean, that fiend has like 1,000 HP. So, you know, that if we just have to keep hammering them, and we, we might get uh, another, a better hammer by then, but... Hmm. A nice hammer with a curve, perhaps? Yeah. But you know, hammer, huh? switch to a different weapon completely. Oh, sounds like the bane of a 4WM party. <laughs> hmm, bane, huh? Sounds to me like that joke just went up in smoke. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Was it uh, terminated in smoke? Oh, the punishment is beginning, isn't it? <laughs> what? Hey, you're the one who picked the poison. What can I say? I might have, yes. I deserve what I'm getting here. But then again, maybe sleep would have helped me uh, not get as much. <laughs> and we appreciate what you did. As, as someone who knows what you're going through, you know, it's the hard work pays off. It really does. Thanks. I was, uh, I was so glad we got to use uh, this run again after I spent so much time putting it together for RPG Limit Break last year. Um, you know, all of these little things like figuring out by kind of like messing with that guy earlier on, I was able to get Dr. Oon to step in a little closer and we can talk to him to learn uh, Leafenish so that we can uh, go to Leafen and we will no longer hear the people of Leafen say, Lu Pa! Lupa. Lu. We met strange people with strange customs and a strange language. So why'd you go through the lake? Manipulation? Um, so part of it is when you step into the canoe, so if you're walking on land and then you get into the canoe on the water, that actually uses um, the step that you get into the canoe is free. It doesn't increase the encounter, uh, doesn't get you to, towards your next encounter. And then the step out of the canoe is also free. And so when we go into and out of the canoe, that's sort of manipulating our counter so that we get these in the right place. Defend the Sam, White Mage. All monsters I, account, I encounter will be sentenced to death by loneliness. Ooh, you are harsh. <laughs> Hey, the white mage has this as his mage staff now, so obviously is like loaded and able to, to take out zombies. <laughs> we actually picked up that white that mage staff in the uh, sea shrine. Uh, the mage staff cast the fire two spell, so even though we're a white mage, we can use this um, we can use this um, mage staff to get a fire a fire effect. And that is good to beat a lot of enemies that are weak against fire. Um, and that's good because these zombies, we can't just run from them. Um, you know, we wanted to get rid of all the enemies that we could run from, but unfortunately, 
uh, it's really hard to get rid of all of the zombies in this area because they're a fairly common encounter um, in this area, kind of between the airship and Leafen. And it's, it's not gonna be easy to kind of get all of them. So we actually have, um, I think we're gonna get another one. Yep. So we're gonna beat him with our mage staff. And earlier we, we actually drank a heal potion just so we could tank that damage. Um, I think I was uh, like looking through the different luck manipulations and I figured out that if we had just a little more HP, we could survive that. Um, and so it all worked out. Uh, Tech, can I get a confirmation about what ingredients are on the pizza that just arrived, thanks to Grave Dolly? They do include pineapple. I have been informed by Tech that the pizza that has been delivered to us does include pineapple. Can, can I read some of these? Yes. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. We've we've been getting a lot in. <laughs> First of all, we've got four dollars from Taskbot, who says, "Dad." <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was good. <laughs> Tina Hacks, thank you for that subscription. <laughs> oh, thank you. We've also got twenty-five dollars from Wardcat, who says, "Great cause and great runs." Thanks, everybody. Then uh, twenty dollars from Easy Games underscore again, who says. Pineapple on pizza is bad for one reason. Pizza toppings are supposed to be savory and rich. Stuff that tastes greasy and delicious. When you put stuff with sugar on it, there becomes an imbalance with your taste buds. It is also cold compared to the rest of the pizza, and it just feels soggy in your mouth. Adding ham only hides the pineapple from being recognized in your taste buds. That being said, pepperoni is the only good topping. <laughs> <laughs> Until you work at a pizza joint for several years, at which point you can't handle eating just pepperoni anymore. <laughs> Seriously. And then uh, here, the, the, we, we, we had several in a row from, uh, from taters. <laughs> in the, <laughs> okay, in, bring in it the on. Amount, in the amount of $1 each, he said, $1. Pineapple has no place on pizza. $1. This is an absolute outrage. One dollar. Never have I in my life experienced a greater injustice. One dollar. You are clearly incapable of ordering a pizza. So, so, so far the donation comments are not really in agreement with you. But hey, if uh, if you're watching and you like pineapple on pizza, why don't you step up and defend your honor here? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, there's more from Taters? More, huh? uh, now, I will admit, bacon is pretty good on pizza. There's an agreement in chat, at least, that bacon does belong on pizza. Hmm. Oh, what? Galvelt says bid war. Bid war. But we already ordered the pizza, so I don't know how we're going to handle that. I would like that, though. <laughs> but this is turning into a bid war. Um, no, please put your donations, and, uh, and we're going to probably target this automatically, but please put your donations against that Celeste run. We definitely want to see that run happen. It's going to be awesome. So... Uh, tell your friends, join on in. The next run up, I believe, is in fact Celeste, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. That, that is Celeste correct. run is going to be absolutely mind-blowingly epic. Celeste is a fantastic run, a fantastic game, a fantastic community. That task is going to blow your mind, and you really want to see that donation incentive get met so you can get the Grand Master, and I believe Expert as well. Cool. Definitely don't want to miss this, so make sure you get those donations in now. We actually had a minor reference. Uh, we, we had a little um, uh, cameo from uh, from um, uh, Dark Madeline, uh, Madeline. Remember this on Friday night during our uh, Link to the Past run. Uh, I'm not sure. So I was actually playing as Madeline. I'm not sure if I kind of like did right by her, but um, you know, I think hey, you won. I, <laughs> I guess I did. I sort of won. <laughs> <laughs> the category of the Celeste run, it is a uh, task showcase of the community levels. Uh, that It's kind of going to be best if you watch it later, so don't go away. Stay with the stream. If you have to step away, come back to it when you can. If you can't come back to it tonight, donate now, and then watch the rest of it later. <laughs> I'm a little pushy. Um, so I'll let the Celeste folks explain what they have in store for you, but it is pretty epic, and they put a massive amount of effort into mods and rule changes. It takes Celeste to an entirely new level, so you got to check it out. <laughs> okay, so here's a here's a 
potential uh, quandary. When going through that room that they were just in, do you go up two over two, or do you go up one over one, up one over one? Because that determines what kind of person you are. Oh, oh. that's true. Are you an up person or a down person? Mm, I think. And do you do it two in a row, or do you just like zigzag? Ah. Hmm. It as up and down, or do you think of it as north and south? Also, this room is the room where Warmech is, the infamous Warmech. That's right. Um, obviously, we're only going to run into it three or four times, but... I keep hoping that I can make a task that has Warmech in it. Uh, the one time, I mean, there might just have to be a category that's like Warmech percent sometime. <laughs> Are these donations all cleared to read? <laughs> So yeah, they uh, the white mage picked up that bane sword, and when you swing that bane sword, poison oozes out of it or something. And uh, Tiamat has a one in seven chance of just dying <laughs> to that sword. It's not even that hard. Yeah, the um, yeah the bane sword is awesome. Uh, earlier, you saw we took out an entire group of four enemies with the Bane Sword. We just used it, and all four of them died. That gave us some extra experience, um, getting us a level up. Um, we, we need some extra experience to do um, an ending. If you've seen this run before at RPG Limit Break, you know it's coming. But um, we need a little extra experience to get another level in order to have uh, the ability to, to execute a little, little swag strat at the end. Do you mean you're not going to swing the hammer for 32 damage for, for 2,000 health? I, I guess that's swag in its own way. <laughs> Do we have time for donations? Sure. Okay. This is a great time. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Um, yes, ta <laughs> t Taters has continued his, his donation <laughs> string. <laughs> He's got a few more here, including one that says, I am not afraid to speak truth to power. <laughs> and then one that says, true courage is standing up for what you believe in when everyone tells you you are wrong. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Um, well, in, in, the, in the meantime, we also got a $10 donation here from uh, Whimsy Heath, who says, I've really loved seeing this event come together, and it's really turned out great. Uh, I may not be American, but it's clear that this is a very important cause all the same. Even apart, everyone affects everyone else. By helping others, they in turn could help yet more. Wait, is that like RNG manipulating life? <laughs> this has been a great event. Let's make it even greater in the future. Anyway, anyway Celeste Tasses are always a pleasure. Let's get that incentive met. Is there an RNG in Celeste? Uh, well, it, everything that happens is deterministic from the start of the room. Okay. So, not exactly. I see. I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about this. Oh, but Celeste would be by room. Yeah, so it can be... It can be weird. <laughs> I see. But I will let the Celeste community explain better because I'm not doing justice to how that game's mechanics work. I see. Yes, I've, I've only I played through Celeste once. I, I think I just I just did like the normal set of levels. I, but it's so deep, actually. There's an actual legit question about the run for once. I see. Our white mage. Are we just gonna stare at chaos until he can't take any more? <laughs> I like that one. I think if you just stare at Chaos, he's, he's probably just going to stare back. Yeah. He may not stare back. He may cast some powerful spells until... So Triton would like to know, uh, taking a lot of extra steps here, setting up, up the TOFR, Topher Encounters? Yes. Um, in fact, um, the thing is, we can step on the lava. When you step on the lava, we're actually not incrementing the counter for random battles. Um, and so... If we step on, if we avoid the lava, then we actually increment that and we get onto the plot where we want to be for the Temple of Fiends. The Temple of Fiends, the last dungeon, is also extremely brutal. Um, many, many enemy combinations that you can't run from and are also very difficult to take down. And so uh, by doing some extra fights early on or taking extra steps like right here, um, we're going to get to the right, just the right spot and we're kind of going to we're gonna figure out the best way to get those extra steps. <laughs> Do 
it's chaos here. No, chaos is, is just that chaos is going to be coming up in a little bit. Yeah. Chaos isn't here. I mean, it might be in the room chaotic. He's but in this dungeon. Yes. I will admit it has been pretty chaotic in the room, too. And now that we have used the orbs to go back in time, we're actually in the right uh, time period for chaos. Well, I... <laughs> Or is it the, uh, I guess you, you, you cut the orbs and then you go back in time, uh, something like that. The, the, the plot for this game, like many, you know, fine, uh, art JRPGs is somewhat convoluted with a 2,000 year time loop and Garland and the first boss. <laughs> you don't say. Yes, the first boss will, will reappear and say, you know, you thought you beat me, but... <laughs> I was sent in back in time by the four fiends who I'll send to the future to fight you, you know, the ones that you beat. Yeah. And so, That's confusing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is this paradox loop? You know, it's hard to tell where the paradox is. Somehow, by going back in time and defeating him, well, the ending will clear it all up. I think, I think you might be right. Yeah. yeah. So it'll, it's something like the 2,000 year time loop has been broken. Everything is back to normal. It's all good. And, um, but Garland will be waiting for us. But I'm not sure if he'll be a good guy or a bad guy. But it does mention that he's waiting for us. And you know, this story, if you're an RPG fan, did inspire a couple of classic Super Nintendo RPGs to come. Uh, including um, the uh, Seventh Saga and uh, Tecmo Secret of the Stars, which share the same story as Garland. Uh -huh. The um, the Bane Sword kills. Yes, um, three and two hundred fifty six chance for the Bane Sword um, to work, um, and then that's if the enemy is immune to the Bane Sword. If they're not immune. If, uh, if the enemy is not immune, then it, it gets less. Like we said, um, um, uh, Tiamat, the Fiend of Wind, was only, it was only a one in seven chance um, we were able to get him down. But the um, other ones, <laughs> the other ones are uh, three and 256. And now if we kind of like correlate that with needing to get the first uh, shot against the Fiend, so the, the, the encounter, getting like the first, uh, the first shot in battle, it depends on the enemy formation because of which slot they're in. Um, in order to get the first shot and get Bane to work, like in this situation, uh, now that chance is only one in 256. So we have to be exactly at a certain place on the RNG when we do this. Luckily, the RNG is only a, um, a 200, um, it's only 256 numbers, so um, an 8-bit number. And it only cycles, so it cycles every two frames. So in order to wait for the RNG to, um, to go all the way, then it's um, 256 times 2, which is 512 frames. So how many seconds is that? Uh, you're asking me to math on this little sleep? <laughs> Let's make chat do the math. I'm delegating. See, I'm a good leader. The answer is yes. yes. Is that at 60 frames? 60 FPS? <laughs> well, I guess technically we're on a CRT, so we're going a little faster than 60 FPS by, by a little bit. So well, if then, it was... Uh, yeah, yeah. well, if it's averaging at 60, then uh, what is that? Uh, five, you said 540? Uh, oh, 512 um, frames. So I think that's eight and a half seconds? That's right, yeah. So it's about eight and a half seconds to wait for the RNG to cycle all the way through. Um, but what, see, the thing is, what we're doing is we're trying to run from the enemies uh, in a way that kind of like, hopefully will land at the right place at the right time by the time we run away from the last fight so that we'll have a kind of a shorter wait. Question about, is it actually 37 and 256 chance? It's actually 37, it might be. That would kind of make sense yeah. based on how this RNG works. Yeah, I'm pretty I, sure it's all out of 256. We just were lazy yeah, yeah. and we shortened it to one out of seven. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's no, um, your actual stats and your level doesn't matter. All of these effect spells and all the magic, it's completely based on, on things that are inherent to the spell itself. So there's nothing you can do to increase your guy's magic power or anything, um, which is part of why the mages in this game are sort of a little weaker. 
So we're gonna get the Mazmune, right? Because the best uh... weapon in the game, even the White Mage can 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 swing it around. <laughs> The white mage can swing it around, but we've already got this bane sword, so you know, we'll just uh, we'll stick with that sword instead of the Mazmune. Oh come on! They'd never let you just bane away chaos, would they? <laughs> and so the game allowing the RNG to be zero. So is that the the way this effect works is actually pretty interesting. The enemy has a flag that says, "Is is this enemy?" Um, invulnerable to that element and if they are vulnerable so if they're invulnerable to that element it sets this threshold to zero but the calculation that says did it work did the bane spell work or did some other effect spell work um, it succeeds if the calc if the result of your roll is less than or equal to zero hmm. Pro a little bit of a programming error there it probably should have been just less than um, and so if you roll exactly zero, like is necessary here, and it's gonna be necessary in the next few spells, you can get any effect to work on any enemy. So we're gonna do that a few times in a row. We're gonna cast this fear spell. The fear spell reduces an enemy's morale, which is sort of this hidden stat. Um, if the enemy's morale gets low enough, there's a on another roll that compares with your level and the enemy can potentially... Cast Cure 4. Yes. If their morale gets low enough, they can run away, including the final boss. Oh, and that's time, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're already at time. That's right. And running away apparently counts as a victory. Come back and fight, you coward! <laughs> Seeing this was one of my favorite moments of RPG Limit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. This was, um, yeah, this is, this, this one's just such a pleasure to kind of like present and make. And so um, I'm so glad that everyone donated to, to get this happening again. And thanks again to everyone who donated to have their names in, um, again, to, to uh, this run. Absolutely. Well, really quick. First of all, thank you very much for watching Final Fantasy. It is now all out of inputs, so the piano roll has gone all the way through. We are done. I can touch him now. Good task spot. He can no longer desync. He has reached perfection. Uh, thank you so much for putting up with the chaos. We've really enjoyed being here. I have to say, I really enjoyed being here. I think everyone in, in, in the room can say that, oh, not, which is not very many people. Um, oh, thanks for the gift subs. Um, <laughs> uh, Thank you very much. We have the Celeste donation incentive. There's a long way to go on that. So don't stop donating. Bring your friends in. Tell them all to join us. This is our last run of the event that we have coming up. And this Celeste run is not one you want to miss. So invite everyone to come in. I'd like to thank the X-Man for making this run. The X-Man, who do we have on the line? High Spirits, I believe? That's right. And who else was involved in seeding the, uh, the, the genesis of this run? That, there was a lot of people that routed it before you, and um, I mean, most of the task route has been me. Um, you know, I've I've, I've learned, um, I've, I've gotten some of the information. I think it's actually, you know, on the ta on the um, on the old task videos forum, it was Biscuit who kind of like threw out something like, "Hey, do you think we could use fear and make the bosses run away? Is that is that something that would make a you know a good route for this game?" And it was kind of like, <laughs> it's not an optimal route, but it's a pretty fun one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so thanks to Biscuit for starting task videos. I don't know if we've actually, you know, got to, got to thank him. Like, yeah, and uh, Delicat has taken over from Biscuit, right. and uh, its site is amazing with lots of really, really cool tool-assisted speedruns. We showed several of them over the course of the last three days. We plan to do this again. I think task giving is going to be a yearly event. Excuse me, a yearly event. There's just so many tasks that we want to show. Obviously, we managed to make it through this run. This one's just unsafe. Some are just impossible. <laughs> so uh, be sure to, uh, to check out task videos for some runs that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. And uh, we just have a special delivery for here for, here for just a second. Oh, so bear with us. Um, I want to talk really quickly. The Celeste team put so much effort into the runs you're about to see. It was 
it seems to me like man years of effort went into this. So many different authors, so many different people involved. Um, you're going to really like the Celestron. I can't talk it up enough. Uh, while I'm still here on stage, because this might be my last opportunity before the finale, <laughs> thank you so much to CompuCat, Guy, uh, the Axeman, Grave Dolly, our live team, uh, the remote folks, Racema, and um, the Monster 212, Media Magnet, um, uh, Vigratech, who helped me get this run set up. Uh, these are in no particular order whatsoever. Uh, who is our tech this time around? Uh, 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 Mr. Yeah, we've had so many tech folks. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. goodness. They, oh, they've been so great, too. My brain has emptied of all knowledge. But before we get off the stage, I have, <laughs> I have something that needs to be seen because there were donations. And I assure you, folks, pineapple belongs both on pizza and it belongs off pizza. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Have a fantastic day. <laughs> hang, hang on a second. Wait, wait, wait. Can, can, can we go back to that camera just so Dwayne go, we, we need to see a reaction to some of these uh, donation comments that came in here because uh, this is kind of this is kind of insane all right so um, let, let's let's just say taters has continued to donate <laughs> just to prove it so, so, so really these are all pineapple on pizza you can all look at it but it's also pineapple off pizza so taters is happy you're ha okay let's see what happens <laughs> So T Taylor says, one dollar, and true knowledge is knowing you're right about how terrible pineapple is on pizza. One dollar, no true white mage allows pineapple on pizza. One dollar, I have to admit, this is somewhat exhausting. One dollar, how's everyone holding up over there? Staying hydrated, making sure you get food? One dollar. Oh, wow. Thank you. As long as it's not pineapple on pizza, I think you're all right. Pineapple on pizza does not help with your macros. <laughs> One dollar, because pineapple on pizza is just irresponsible. <laughs> it just keeps going and going. Um, One dollar, honestly, it's just disrespectful to the culinary arts. One dollar, honestly, I'm running out of steam here. And then... <laughs> <laughs> last, last one, last one. We can go to transition. Dwayne, go. Bort donates five dollars and says, "Hi, donating on behalf of Taters, who is unable to submit <laughs> at least five more donations out of of identical amounts due to his bank's fraud prevention measures. He wanted to say his opinions on pizza were wrong, and he's sorry." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. This was hilarious. Take care. <laughs>